Our red flag situation here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the Eyes Out IndyCar Series is now an hour and 15 minutes, roughly. And uh, we are still waiting official word on the condition of Dan Weldon. We had a 15-car crash, if you're just tuning in, on lap number 12. And several cars got into the catch fence. We'll show you one angle from high above, and you'll see exactly what happens. Cars, just as soon as they touch, we end up having a situation where the one car starts to get out of kilter. Eddie gets collected by another and a chain reaction that continues. And as we discussed before, at these speeds at over 220 miles an hour, we really are just a passenger. You're a passenger, and really how you deal that accident is, is just a question of reflex. Once these things start, it's just an accumulative effect of cars and pieces, gearboxes, and whatever being bounced around the track. And there's nothing you can do. You just have to ride it out and hope you're in the right place. And many of these drivers, unfortunately, were not. And multiple cars got into the air, including Dan Weldon's car right there, as you see, as it goes into the catch fence as well. And, it, and it, it's just unbelievable carnage. Every driver that we have talked to said they have never seen a zone like that uh, in their lives where they had to drive through and how much debris there really was scattered across the track uh, a along with two guys who have been through this. I mean, you've broken your back twice. I mean, this, this, there's nothing uh, more devastating. We, we talk about it and we almost from time to time get used to the fact that we're running fast, we hit Place, the wall, and do. everybody walks away. And because these cars have become so safe over the years, the tracks have become safer. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the Indy Racing League really developed the safer barrier that's now in use here at this particular track at all tracks around North America and the world, for that fact, used at all NASCAR tracks. But, you know, we get this reminder every once in a while about how fast we are going, 220 miles an hour, the length of a football field in less than a second. And, Eddie, you said it, that, you know, it's a reactionary thing that when this type of thing happens in front of you, you hope you've made the right decision. But there's sometimes no decisions to be made. For a lot of drivers today, they were just in a place where there was no option for them, Eddie. But they, they have packaged a lot of cars together here at this race. This is one of those racetracks where we had some great interviews, unfortunately, in the last hour where all the drivers have given their perspective. We put a lot of race cars on a racetrack that is too easy to drive flat. Flat means you never take your foot off the throttle. And when things happen here, it, it's a multiple. It just keeps going faster and faster and faster and faster. And you, you have a car that spun, stopped in the middle of the track, and you have 15 of them arriving at 225, 20, 20 miles an hour. There is nothing you can do, and, and all that energy has to go someplace. And it does, but, you know, when I'm listening to you, um, this is us we're talk talking now because we're retired, you know, and we're analysts. But when we were driving, I mean, we chose to get inside those cars. I mean, that's what we did for a living. We wanted to get in there. We wanted to go fast. We wanted to beat the other car. We choose to get inside those cars. We know that the consequences might be dire. And uh, you've had accidents. I've had accidents. But in this situation here, we're just hoping and praying for uh, Dan Weldon, Marty. L let me ask both of you. When was it the first time you realized it was everybody else but me, and then all of a sudden it was you? I think probably for me it was uh, Brazil the first time I broke my back. You know, we talked, and you talked a little bit earlier about how the cars crash and they dissipate the energy because they're really crumple zones. And we saw that a lot with today with a lot of the cars, and a lot of the guys stepped out of the cars and walked away. My first accident when I broke my back, I thought it was a small accident. The car went around on me. We had a problem with the rear wing, went into the back, uh, the back of the car, went into the wall at 185 miles an hour. And your mind's working so fast, I'm going backwards. We're in Brazil, and I'm wearing do we have the parts here to fix the car? And then the impact with the wall, I knew it was serious. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have the injury. And it's those types of things that drivers think about until the injury comes. And as we get a little bit older, you start to think a little bit more about it. And I always felt that. And then, you know, responsibilities come with families. And um, that's the sort of scenario where you start to say, you know, something, maybe this is dangerous. But as a young driver, you don't think about that. There, there is not a racing series in the world that is as fast and is, I, I hate to say this, but as potentially dangerous as IndyCar racing at these speeds on these big banked ovals. I agree. That's a fact. I and agree. it's also a fact that all these drivers have made the decision to race, and there's a whole line of them that want to get inside to mm -hmm. race. And that was us a few years ago. Having said that, I think it's very important that when you put these drivers in this position to be racing, 
you always contemplate what the possible consequences are. You cannot put all the responsibility on the drivers because somebody got sideways, somebody was high, somebody was low. That's irrelevant. When you put them in, a, in an arena like that and you tell them, go race, and there's going to be a winner at the end of the day, and it can make or break somebody's career, it is, that decision is already made months and months beforehand with how many cars you're going to allow on the track, what the configurations of the car are going to be. Those are things that are done before you get to the racetrack. So I, I think it's very wrong, and I'm, and I'm sure this will not happen today, to lay the blame on a specific driver that did a thing, something that was wrong. It's a question of how did we get here? Let's show you the cars that were involved. We have 13 that are listed now as out of this race. It, the list includes uh, Hildebrand, Tracy, Willpower, Vitor, Mira. Mira's not out of the race. Uh, neither is James Jakes. The others are listed as out. This is the, the 15 that are involved in the total crash. Here's page two. It's a, it's a long list. Through Townsend Bell, Pippa Mann, Buddy Rice, Thomas Schechter, E.J. Vizo, Dan Weldon, Car Charlie Kimball. And, of course, it is Dan Weldon's con condition that we are most worried about at this moment. He was airlifted out of here. We have no further word at this time. We've sent Jamie Little over to University Medical Center so that she can give us direct reports as soon as they become available. Now, the drivers have been summoned to a meeting inside the uh, media center building which is on the infield portion of the track now we are not privy to be inside and hear what's going on in that meeting but as soon as come something comes out of that meeting we will of course pass it along to you we'll take a break here at las vegas